Hello, and welcome to this guide to prayer flicking and a soul split flicking for beginners. For starters, let's get right into what we're going to be talking about in today's video. We're going to start things off by going over the basics of prayer flicking. After that, I've got a couple quick recommendations, and we're going to get right into a slow-mo breakdown of learning how to prayer flick. After that, we're going to do a deep dive on how soul split works. I'm going to break down what soul split flicking is, and then finally, I'm going to show you how to do it. That's the game plan. Let's get right into it. There are clickable timestamps for the table of contents in the description down below. Prayer flicking is swapping between overhead prayers in order to reduce incoming damage from multiple styles at once. You can't have multiple overheads on at the same time, but you can swap between them as different styles hit you to reduce the damage from everything incoming. Prayer flicking is optional in most scenarios, but it can be a required mechanic at some bosses. The oldest example of this is Jad, the final boss of the fight caves. He hits no damage on the correct prayer, but if you miss a prayer flick, he can one-shot you from full HP. More recently, and the reason for this guide, is Raksha. Raksha is very similar to Jad with that regard, where he will attack you with ranged, melee, and magic, and he will stagger these attacks in such a way that they are flickable. In RuneScape 3, damage taken is calculated as it hits you and not as it's cast, which means the timing is very, very simple. You don't need to worry about when the boss is firing a projectile, you just need to make sure you've got the right prayer on when it hits you. Before we get into the prayer flicking itself, here are some recommendations. Good keybinds for overhead prayers make a massive difference. They're not required, and I know people that prayer flick by manually clicking, but a good keybind can make all the difference. One other recommendation is the use of Revolution++ when you're first learning. This can allow you to not have to split your focus between firing abilities and changing prayers, and even though we will be going through how to do that later on, it's really really good when learning to just focus on the prayer flicking timing and get that down by itself. For me personally, I fire my basic abilities with Q, W, E, R, and T, and I've got my overhead prayers just above that on 3, 4, 5, and 6. This allows me to use abilities and switch prayers without moving my hand very far. I've linked a full guide to keybinds in the description below, but effectively, put prayers somewhere accessible and easy to hit. Now that we've been over the basics, it's practice time. A low ping, low population world is recommended, but not needed. When Reaction was released, a lot of people were commenting that the prayer flicking was impossible because they play on high ping, and this is simply not the case. In researching for this video, I was able to do the basic prayer flicking on Australian worlds with 330 ping, and if I can do it on that ping, you should be good to go. That being said, the higher your ping is, the less of a window of opportunity you're going to have to actually select the correct prayer. And because of this, the lower the ping you can get to, the easier time you're going to have. At the same time, doesn't matter what your ping is, you should be able to get this down. Now, it's time to get flicking. Raksha is a really good boss to practice this at, because if you miss a flick, you're going to take over 2,000 damage. And if you hit your prayers correctly, you'll take less than 1,000. So it's really easy to tell if you're getting your prayers active on time. It's also good because Raksha's attack pattern is not set. He'll attack with ranged, melee, and magic in a completely random order, and he'll start attacking the second you walk into the instance. When you're swapping prayers at Raksha, it'll look something like this. When you see a blue projectile flying towards you, you're going to want to activate Deflect Magic. When you see arrows falling towards you, you're going to activate Deflect Missiles, and when you see him tilt his head forward, that means you're getting a melee attack, and you want to activate Deflect Melee. The melee attack comes out one game tick faster than the others, which makes it the toughest one of the three. One quick note if you do decide to practice this at Raksha. Once he's hit you four times, you need to step two squares back to dodge the tailspin, and after eight attacks, you will be briefly stunned. When you get stunned, use Freedom, and then move a couple squares, and then you can continue flicking just like before. Despite those tiny mechanical things, I do still believe that Raksha is the best place to practice this. We are of course in practice mode right now, and the goal in step 1 is to hit all of our prayer swaps until we run out of HP and we die. And then at that point, we get to go all over again until we've mastered it. It looks something like this. The ability tracker on the left hand side of my screen will show when I actually hit the keybind, so you can tell I do have a little bit of ping here, but I am still able to hit all of my prayer swaps. As you can see, after 4 attacks, I'm dodging the tail swipe, and then after 8, I'm using freedom, and I'm moving briefly to dodge the magic bomb, and outside of that, I'm just going to keep flicking until I'm out of HP, and I'm going to go all over again. If you're on the more experienced side, you could see this as slightly redundant, but we're going to be breaking this down in slow-mo. I've slowed everything down by 50%, and I'm going to be calling all of my prayer flicks for those newer or less experienced players, um, so you have an idea sort of what's going through my head and when I'm hitting my keybinds. First attack, I see a ranged projectile, and I'm going to hit deflect from range. The second attack I'm going to see in just a second is going to be blue, and as soon as I see the hint of blue, I'm immediately pressing my deflect magic button. You'll see on my ability tracker to the left that I'm pressing these binds quite a bit earlier than my prayer actually switches, and that is just because I'm playing on a high ping world on purpose. The third attack was melee, and the fourth attack here is a range attack coming in, and as soon as I see those projectiles, 
I'm pressing my keybind for deflect missiles. You could also manually click this. It doesn't really matter. It's just completely dependent on your setup. After that fourth attack, like we talked about before, I'm dodging the tail swipe just by stepping two tiles back, and then I'm going to resume flicking for the next four. That is a melee attack, and the melee attack does come out quite a bit faster than the other ones, so if you are going to mess one up, it is more likely to be that one. Following that up, we've got yet another range attack, and I'm going to hit deflect missiles before it hits me, and then we've got two more attacks here. I've got a melee attack where I actually misclicked hit deflect magic, but I did have time to recover and press the deflect melee button before it was too late. After that, we've got one final magic attack to finish things off, and that is the first eight prayer flicks of the Raksha fight. The attack order is random though, so when you do this for yourself, it's going to be different every single time, which is absolutely perfect for practice. Once you've got the prayer swapping down, you're probably ready for step two, which is swapping prayers while firing abilities. This should feel pretty clunky at first, especially if you're not used to prayer switching, and it's completely normal to miss a bunch of abilities as well as a bunch of prayers. But if you hammer away at this even for 10-15 minutes, by the end of that time period, you should be significantly better than you were when you started. As soon as you're comfortable with this and you're used to this, congratulations, you can successfully prayer flick anything in the game, including Raksha. Now that we understand and have mastered regular prayer flicking, it's time to talk about soul split flicking. It's the natural step up from regular prayer flicking, and it allows for the healing of soul split while also getting the protection of overhead prayers. This is done by activating soul split between prayer swaps and can also be practiced in the same manner as before at Raksha. When done correctly, this allows for massive healing at every single boss in the game, greatly reducing food use. Before we talk about how Soul Split flicking works, we should probably discuss how Soul Split itself works. Soul Split is an overhead curse that will turn a proportion of your damage dealt into HP healed. It doesn't give you this heal when you cast an ability or when that ability hits your target. It actually converts to healing one game tick or 0.6 seconds before any ability you cast hits your target. Because different abilities take different amounts of time to reach your target, and the travel time is also based on how far away you are from that target, it's very difficult to flick Soul Split by just putting Soul Split up for a short period of time. In order to maximize the healing you get, you really want to have Soul Split active as often as possible. Because of this, when you're Soul Split flicking, you're going to keep Soul Split as your active overhead curse, and then you're going to switch to your Deflect Prayer only when you're taking a hit. If you were to do it the other way around, where you were camping a deflect and only swapping to soul split when you cast an ability, the majority of your abilities would not actually convert back to healing, and you wouldn't gain a whole lot out of it. Let's break it down in slow-mo. A good way to tell if you're getting those soul split heals is if you can see the animation for soul split. It's those little white cloud things flying towards Raksha. Every single time you see one of those, that means that you're being healed. As soon as I see that I've been hit, I'm instantly swapping right back to soul split. It's very click intensive as we talked about before, but it is exceptionally worth it and after a time it becomes completely second nature. And at that point, you can virtually no food almost every single boss in the game with only this one singular technique. You'll see in the clip you're watching right now that I am barely losing life points right now and I have no armor on and I'm attacking with chaotic crossbows. If you weren't using the world's worst gear and no armor, you'd literally be able to gain HP off of Raksha's auto attacks simply by doing this. We've talked about how soul split works, and we've also gone over soul split flicking itself and how to do it, but I also wanted to briefly touch on why you would want a soul split flick and try and give you guys some real numbers for how good it actually is and how good it can be, so you guys can decide for yourselves if you think it's worth learning. In my opinion, it very much is, but you guys can see for yourselves. This is a Reddit post that was made shortly after I did a full Raksha solo with no food, healing only from soul split with no protection prayers. It breaks down how much HP I would have healed from Soul Split, and the final number in a 3 minute and 22 second boss fight was just over 81,000. This is an approximation, but just from having Soul Split up, that is saving me 13 Sardomen brews. In my opinion, that is more than worth the extra effort, not only in terms of securing a kill, but also in terms of saving money. Doing the math here, saving 13 brews a kill is saving me over 500,000 coins per kill, which equates to over 7.5 million coins per hour. It's not something that you need for anything in the game, but that to me is exceptionally worth it. Also, if you think that that's in any way an exaggeration, this is one of the clips I recorded for this guide, where I went in with the exact same setup with no healing other than soul split, and no defensive reductions either, so I was not using any defensive abilities at all other than freedom when I was stunned. And you'll see that I almost completed the entire Raksha kill with soul split flicking alone. It can be really unfriendly to learn, but this is why I tell people that it's so incredibly worth it. Being able to survive so easily without even having to put on a shield or doing anything else to reduce my incoming damage is ridiculously strong. 
Although soul split clicking is extremely useful, it's also very click intensive. And for my upcoming reaction guide, I will not be soul split flicking in any of those guides clips. That's not because it's not good to do, but it's because it is a technique that is not required to complete the boss fight. It does make it easier if you know how to do it, but it is in no way required. And the only thing that will be required is the base prayer flicking that we went through at the start of this video. At the same time, the gear I have on right now is the exact gear that I have made my Raksha guide with. So, so long as you've got above that, you should be ready to rock. Other than that, I think we're good to go. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can throw them in the comment section down below. And outside of that, I hope you're all well. I hope everybody's safe. And thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.